From the KDLM studios in Detroit Lakes, it's HodgePodge with Carol McCarthy, presented by Partnership for Health, and now airing on TV3. First, we've got Erica Jepson in the studio, and she is from Becker County Foster Home. She's the coordinator of the program here for Becker County, works with Becker County Human Services. Good morning, Erica. Good morning. Uh, well, what can you update us on today? Um, just um, kind of putting a call out for um, those interested in becoming foster parents. Um, Becker County is um, really short of, of foster homes at this time in all of our communities. Um, so we're really hoping that um, people can, people who are interested, maybe thought about it, um, can give me a call and, and learn more about it. Okay, uh, so they give you a call, and uh, what is, what kind of timeline is the process when people make the commitment to be foster parents or a foster home? Um, it typically takes um, about four to six months, depending on um, my schedule, their schedule. It can be done in as little as two months. Mm -hmm. um, they There's lots of components that come with it. They have to have six hours of an orientation class, which can be done um, in a group or individually. Um, then we do some home visits and lots of paperwork. Um, they have some trainings that have to be completed. Um, most of them are online. Um, and then I just email out the links and they can complete them at home. All right. And what typically uh, is requested of a foster home um, as far as uh, children go? I mean, you have kids of all ages and lots of groups that need homes. Correct. We have um, kids of, of all ages. Um, we really have a need for those that are willing to take older kids. Um, we often have large sibling groups, so we, we try our best to keep siblings together, um, which means, you know, we have... Um, siblings of anywhere from two to seven. Um, we've also want to keep kids in their, their same school district if possible. Um, they experience many changes just coming into foster care, so we try to um, make sure that they're able to stay in their home community. All right, uh, Erica Jepson is with Becker County Human Services. She is the coordinator of the foster homes and uh, some of the other things uh, that you provide as once people are uh, foster homes, foster parents, you provide uh, training as well. Yep, we um, I provide some um, webinar training. We also have um, a foster care support group once a month um, that we tip typically take one topic of training and just talk about it. Um, we have we provide um, a meal and childcare. So if um, they want to come and have supper and bring the kids and um, join us, that that's great. Okay, and what is the requirement of anybody who wants to be a foster parent or a foster home? Um, dispel some of the myths for us. Yep, um, so they have to be at least 21. They okay. can be single, married. Um, they can live in their own home. They can rent their own home. Um, their home does have to pass a safety inspection. Um, and then just complete training. They do have to have two years of um also taking care of children doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a parent, but just that you have experience working with children. All right. Erica Jepson works with the Becker County Human Services, and she handles the foster homes and a foster care for the county. And again, if you have any questions, you can go online, uh, check out some information. You have uh, forms and you have kind of the, the rundown of uh, what needs to be done. Yep. They're, um, on the Becker County webpage um, under foster care, all of the forms to get started are on there. There's also a uh, um, form that it, uh, outlines the process. Mm -hmm. um, we also have an informational meeting coming up this coming Thursday at six o'clock at Human Services. Um, just a, about a half hour, hour meeting just um, explaining the process and um, people are able to ask any questions that they may have about becoming a foster parent. All right. Uh, so uh, you also train family members. Um, you do like to keep families together, but you do offer um, training or you, you would like family members, too, to step up um, because a lot of the kids end up with family. Yep. Yes, absolutely. We um, can can place with relatives before they're licensed okay. um, if they are able to um, pass a background check and have no child protection history um, and their home is safe. Okay. All right. Uh, so more, for more information, you can contact the Becker County Human Services, Child Protection uh, Intake, and uh, Erica Jepson will uh, be connected with you and yes. you can find out more information on the Becker County website. And uh, anything that we're forgetting this morning? Um, just my phone number. If you have any questions, you can give me a call at 218-847-5628, and my extension is 5424.
All right, Erica Jepson, thank you so much. All right, thanks, Carol. And Erica joins me each month uh, to talk about the great need for foster homes in our community. And if uh, the calling is for you, give them a call at uh, 847-5621 at extension 5628. 5628. Five, five, good thing I, I yes. remind, remind me of that. 847-5628, extension 542. Erica Jepson with Becker County Human Services. Now, back to HodgePodge with Carol McCarthy on KDLM Detroit Lakes. Joining me next in the studio, I've got Sandy Gunderson from Becker County Environmental Services. Good morning, Sandy. Good morning. Oh, you ready for go. spring? I am. I, the sun is shining. The war, the heat is going to be turned up a little bit the next couple days. It's in the it's air. Great. I can feel spring happening. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. And with that comes the opening of the HHW Household Hazardous Waste Facility. I know that uh, you are... Uh, busily getting that all organized we are we are i've been out there a lot and we're we're ready though april 1st is our first day i'm excited so if you're looking to get rid of paint you can actually go out to the transfer station bring it out there you know throughout the winter and then april 1st we open so if you're looking for paint we have a lot Okay, so and all arrays, all, all colors, colors all sizes, <laughs> uh, oil-based latex cleaners. I'm mean, like, we're overflowing. We have Ooh. so much. So it's exciting. Yeah. So. so that's the paint that's dropped off throughout the year, throughout mm-hmm. the fall and the winter at the transfer station. Yep. And, and the good product gets put out on the shelves, and then the bad product we properly ship. Okay. You know, we dispose of. And so it's it's there was a lot of good stuff this winter. Ooh, so okay. I know it's it's exciting. <laughs> people I think hopefully it's good weather. If it's snowing, you know, it, it right. takes a few weeks for people to get the hang right. of it, but yeah, there I think I've had people asking already. You know when do you open? Okay. So we're right. we're ready. So the doors open up. Uh, April 1st and then uh, all the way through October. So. <laughs> through October, yep. Okay. Every Wednesday, 8 to 4.30. Okay. Unless it's a holiday, but. All right. Yeah, we're ready. Sounds good. And you're located right off of 59. Three miles north of Detroit Lakes on Highway 59 and a quarter mile west on 144. Okay. The address is 24455 County Road 144. All right. Sandy Gunderson from Becker County Envi- Environmental Services. Mm-hmm. In the studio with me this morning on this March 6th, just uh, less than a month away from the opening of the Household Hazardous Waste Facility, which she uh, manages out there and uh, getting ready, uh, organizing uh, things uh, so people can just come in and find what they need. And And shop. Pretty quick. It's a little shop, but you've got a lot in it. We've got a lot (laughs) in it. And and the good thing about it is that it's free. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. We come in and take product, and we want you to use it up. And, and can you go in there as many times as you'd like, or how does that work? Is You can, as long as you're using the product. Okay. We don't want people coming to take it just because it's there and then right. putting it on a shelf and never looking at it again. We, right. we want you to use it up. So okay. that's the whole idea is saving um, tax dollars from shipping it away and then saving us from buying. I okay. mean, there's nothing wrong with buying either. There's lots of people, you know, that need to buy the product and that kind of thing, but this is this is the leftover. Okay. So, it's a good deal. All right. Environmental Services, of course, uh covers uh the household waste facility, mm-hmm. also the uh, transfer station and the recycling program and some uh, news with the recycling of course with the movement movement of the boys and girls club of detroit lakes the thrift out, store uh thrift store yep. yes not the, the not the club but <laughs> we're the not moving in the club yeah so that's where you had a site a big big blue recycling bin site and we now did. that has moved it's a it was a big site too it yes. was 10 bins yes. and it's moved to 504 Davis Avenue. Okay. So it's basically <laughs> just east of um, the newspaper office. Oh. There, there was an empty lot there okay. that the city owned, and so the bins are there. Okay. So they didn't move very far. All but right. if people are looking, and we have signs up at the old site too. Okay. But uh, so that it's it's pretty close. All right. Just on the other side of the railroad tracks. Okay, I was going to say it's across the tracks. Okay, and you still have though the site downtown right across from Human Services. Yep. Is that going to move <clears throat> now with the construction of the new police station? I believe so. Okay, but you I, don't know where yet. We're not quite sure okay. where. Probably not too far. We still have the arena. Mm-hmm. We still have where the 59er is. There's a, a site just north of the um college. Okay. It's in their parking but on the north side of the building. All right. 
So and then Shorewood Pub mm -hmm. um, in their in their lot. So they're in the air in the local area here. And then we have forty six sites total throughout the county. Okay. So we have a lot of sites. Yes. We try and make it as easy as we can. And then we have the curbside recycling um, that the haulers um, hand out bins and service. So and that's available to residents and businesses all right yes my recycling uh, c comes by early in the morning they've caught me uh, walking my dog of course <laughs> that sets off pearl barking 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 but, I'm like, Shh. but yeah, yeah they're out early collecting those recycl they recyclables are. and uh so you've got that going on mm -hmm. uh the recycling and that's going gangbusters uh, it is going gangbusters something that we changed this last year is if people remember we we collected separately Aluminum and metal in one, and then plastic in another, and we've combined those now oh. at all our sites. So aluminum, or aluminum tin and plastic. Okay. And we added cartons, so milk cartons, oh. juice cartons, that kind of thing. The ones with the little tops yep. on that you yep. can. Okay. The tetra packs, the okay. bullion type boxes, and that kind of thing, and you can add those in there also. Now we have machinery that can help separate those out. So, okay. and it also um, increases capacity at sites. You know, you'd have a partial full one and a full one, and they'd have to come back at different times. Now we can fill. Let's say there's aluminum or metal and plastic. They can fill both of those bins. Okay, if that makes sense. So. It, it increases capacity, and then we have the ability to separate it out. All right. So, yeah. Um, just one question. Did you send it, did uh, Environmental Services here in Becker County send anything to that uh, site in Big Lake where they had the big fire? In Becker? The yeah. Well, we, we do uh, ship uh, some of our metal through okay. um, Northern Metal. Okay. So it's the same company. I believe ours goes down to the cities. Oh, okay. And I think but they're now going back to their site in Minneapolis. Right now they are, yep. All right, I'll just clear the air there, so to speak. And you know, that's a question that I've had a lot. You know, um, I had just had someone come into the office yesterday, and and they asked, well, you know, we heard a lot last year that mm -hmm. that garbage or that recycling was being landfilled, mm -hmm. and recycling in Becker County is not. If it's if it's uh, collected through recycling by state law, it has to be recycled if there's a market for it. Okay. And so our recycling actually goes. Uh, some of it goes down to the cities, or north of the cities, and. And uh, it gets much of it gets used locally. Okay, uh, ours doesn't go the over. The thing is, I don't get why we're, my husband and I were talking about glass. I'm just mm -hmm. so surprised that glass, you know, isn't recycled as much as we it, think it should be. And we do <laughs> actually. We send ours down to Strategic Materials down in, in oh, okay. Minneapolis area, and they want glass. Oh, okay. The challenge with glass is is that it weighs a lot, right. so you don't get a lot in a trailer, and it's expensive mm -hmm. to ship. So, but we we do it. I mean, okay. you know, they, if they can do it where we where we break even, mm -hmm. if they help pay shipping costs or that kind of thing, then it's a you know win win. Everybody wins. So we still recycle it. Mm -hmm. um, so okay. keep doing it. Right. <laughs> and it has to be recycled. It actually has to be taken to the big blue bins. You can't do it Correct. on the curbside. That's it doesn't belong. And for us, the, the curbside carts, we don't want glass in there just okay. because we we have um, humans that basically take that kind of thing out. So it's, yeah, it, we'd like it to go to the big blue bins because then it doesn't even go through our machinery. It, mm -hmm. it gets stockpiled. And then when we get enough, we ship it down to the cities. All right. Sandy Gunderson so, yeah. from Becker County Environmental Services in the studio with me this Friday morning. And uh, some of the other things uh, that you wanted to tell us a little bit about. I just wanted to remind people, a, a couple things have changed. Um, so electronics, mm -hmm. people have asked, you know, what does that cost? Well, uh, it changed a little bit from last year's prices. So screens 27 and under, it's $5 a piece. So that's the monitors TV monitors or the computer monitors. Okay. Screens over 27 inches is $10. So that's kind of a good deal for Becker right. County residents. Fluorescent bulbs, there's no charge. We used to have a, a limit of 10. Mm -hmm. Now there's no charge for whatever you bring in. And oh, that's okay. households or businesses. Okay. So there's not a limit on that. Um, and then tires. Last year there was a, a small fee. And this year you can bring four at no cost. Okay. What happens the to the tires? They get recycled. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> they get recycled. All so right. yeah, it's it's not um, it's not like it used to be where everything just got dumped. It's mm -hmm. much of what we take in gets recycled. Okay, a large amount, and we, you know we're we're kind of a transfer station for recyclables too. Not only for for waste, mm -hmm. but for recyclables. And we we are looking always to take out more, m much more out of the waste stream. We we want to recycle as much as we can in a cost-effective manner. All right.
Yes, I know that there's lots of discussion at county board meetings about the recycling program and what's going on next and what else. We've come a long way. Yeah, and, with and that MRF sta- uh, mm-hmm. material recovery facility. Correct. And we really have to thank the, the residents of Becker County because we've increased recycling because of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's couldn't do it without you. So we really appreciate all the, the activity and all the, the partnership that folks do when they take their recyclables to the curb. Okay. And of course, there's uh, egg plastic recycling now. Yep. That's been in the last couple of years. We, we accept egg plastic. And actually, it's even expanded. If you have a special kind of plastic, give our office a call and we can do some research and that kind of thing. Um, so egg plastic, agri- agricultural plastic farmers, um, if they have the, you know, the windrows or the bales that they wrap, that's recyclable, and we have a, a great program for that. And then we actually have a local business, um, Dynamic Homes, that has insulation bags and their house wrap. Mm-hmm. We did research, and that is the same kind of plastic, so we're able to ship that, too. Okay. So at 33 ton, that would have normally gone into the garbage last year. More than 33 ton got recycled. So that's pretty exciting. That is. <laughs> that is very cool. So All right. And keep up that work. <laughs> okay. and, then, and then next month. Just keep your ears open. There's going to be lots of things happening for Earth Month. It's okay. the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Yes. So for us in our office, it's, it's Earth Day is every day. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, we'll, have, we'll have a, a hodgepodge, a special hodgepodge. We always have an Earth Hour for mm-hmm, hodgepodge. Mm-hmm. So we'll work on that on uh, April 22nd. That's exciting. Celebrating 50 yeah. years of yeah. Earth Day. We have some compost classes coming up. Oh, cool. And we'll have a tour of the Solid Waste Campus that week. Okay. And so, yeah, there's... There's great stuff happening. Okay. Sandy Gunderson, the bringer of good news this Friday (laughs) morning (laughs) Uh, from Environmental Services, Becker County Environmental Services. And uh, thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. All right. You have a great weekend. You also. Enjoy the sunshine. Going to be in the 40s. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And melt that snow and get all the, yeah, yeah, it's going to be lots of treasures popping up in the yard (laughs) that I'll probably take to the garbage (laughs) can. Or recycling. Uh, (laughs) Or recycling. (laughs) I don't think we want to recycle what I'm going to find. But um, anyway, Sandy, thank you so much. And that's going to wrap.